Everyone, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please, Mrs. Meltzer. Thank you. Mrs. West. Here. Mr. Here. Keyes. Here. Mr. Pearl. Here. Mr. Cannon. Here. Mr. Argona. Here. Mr. Gillaham. Here. Mrs. Meltzer. Here. Thank you. Do we have additions and or deletions to tonight's agenda? We do. Okay. Item number six has been deleted. And add-on 12 is a approval of a Class C SDM liquor license and a outdoor sales. Item 13, budget amendment for repair and maintenance of police station. This is to um, uh, clarify the motion from the last board meeting. Item 14, add on request closed session discussion pending litigation. Clinton first, Viviano versus Clinton Township, Melter, <coughs> Michigan Court of Appeals case. This is uh, TMP-9R7JXPYJ. And item 15, add on request closed session. Clinton versus Bruglio pending 41B district court. So moved. Support. Thank you. Is there a another add-on that you might someone might have passed out tonight? Uh, for, that, that actually uh, would be item 15. I'm sorry. And, uh, okay. uh, Mr. Supervisor, you raise a good point, though. That can actually be handled either in open or closed session. We can do it really in open session if you prefer before we go into closed. Before session. we go into closed session. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the amendment? I did. There is, yep, and a support. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Keyes. Yes. Mr. Cannon. <coughs> yes. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mr. Gillaham. Yes. Mrs. Muscle. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, and welcome to your township board meeting this evening. If you have anything to say on any item as it comes before the board, please come to the podium and give us your name and address for the record. If there's something you'd like to say at the end of the meeting, we have public comment cards to your left in the front of the room. Mr. Gillahan, would you like to briefly talk about the next several days? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Cannon. Um, you kind of read my mind there. I was sort of trying to get your attention. Didn't cut. I talked to you ahead of time either, so I appreciate that that awareness. Um, it, the, an issue that my office spends a great deal of time on, and that is uh, the Clinton Township community-wide blood drive. It is a, a community-wide effort. It is our schools, our libraries, the Clinton Township Senior Center as our site sponsors, our business community that steps forward, and it's uh, working together to make this one of the largest and uh, longest-lasting blood drives in all of Southeast Michigan. And so we have uh, appointments still available. There are some spots uh, at the Senior Center level. There are some spots at uh, Clintondale High School, and there are some blood drive uh, spots uh, at the South Branch Library. So Tuesday and Wednesday, um, all of those are online, um, and uh, you can register by going to redcrossblood.org or uh, dialing 286 uh, 586 1768 uh, And... Um, so here's the thing about the blood drive, and that is medical advancements are pretty incredible, and we can do really incredible things. But the one thing that we can't do in a laboratory is make blood. That requires people helping other people and stepping up and uh, helping our community meet that challenge as a, uh, um, as a community. And so as a result, I want to uh, ask people to step up, uh, make a donation. And, and the last thing I'll close on this We've got a great raffle this year. So um, we've secured a lot of uh, prizes, uh, six different iPads, uh, $40, $50 gift cards, and uh, uh, gift cards to, to uh, a ton of our area Clinton Township-based restaurants that have stepped up to uh, support the drive as well. So thank you. Yep, thank you. <clears throat> With that, we'll take item number one, introduction of appointment of the applicants to the Universal Design Playground Committee. Dear board members, a, well, a Universal Design Committee has been formed with approval of the Township Board. Initial applicants appointed by the Board of Trustees will establish bylaws, length of terms, meeting times, and other organizational issues. Five applications were received from Kelly Spangolo, Spangiolo, Justin Michalak, Anne-Marie Otoy, Lisa Valerio-Noak, 
and Paul Sasson for appointment to the Universal Design Committee, Playground Committee, which, were, which has been attached for your review. Per the policy guidelines, an invitation has been extended to all applicants to attend the February 3rd, 2020 board meeting in which they will be provided an opportunity to introduce themselves to the Board of Trustees, whereby each being given a three minute time limit in which to do so. Thank you, Stephanie Middlestadt, Administrative Assistant. Thank you, and thank you to those who have stepped up so far. We do have additional positions on this committee. If anyone is interested in still applying, it will be online. I'll, I'll remind the board that we approve this with the understanding that those who work in the community and do things in the community, as well as those who live here, are eligible to apply. And also that the, the one of the main functions of the board will be to not only bring ideas forward, but also to generate the funds to help pay for those ideas. And with that, is there anyone here who wishes to introduce themselves? Good. Good evening, Super Mr. Supervisor, members of the board. My name is Anne Marie Otoy, 20748 Shoreview Street. Clinton Township, Michigan, 48035. Uh, back in October, I presented before the board on behalf of the Ark of Macomb County the idea for an inclusive mm -hmm. playground. I believe that um, there, we believe that there is a need for such a, a facility to be in existence within the Clinton Township borders, and we are uh, thrilled to know that Clinton Township feels the same way. I have submitted an application to participate on the committee, um, at, both as a member of the Ark of Macomb County, as an employee of the Ark of Macomb County, and as a mother of a child with disabilities. Um, my son is 20 years old now, and so it's been a long road. Um, and there are many other parents like me out there who are just embarking on this road, um, or who have been on the same path as I have for a long time, that are strongly in support of this um, this structure, this, this playscape in this community, and I know it will get good use. I'm passionate about the cause, both from a professional and a personal standpoint, and I feel that I'm ideally suited for this role on this committee. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wants to go ahead? So um, I think um, uh, Anne Marie is the only one of the applicants that's here tonight. Um, but um, as you know, you've met her before, and you know her passion uh, for the issue, and um, I'm sorry, is there another? No. Oh, no, 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 no. So, so oh, we appreciate you being here. The format is not a question and answer, but. Oh, you, perfect. No, I just oh. wanted to add on one quick thing. The, the, the people who have applied for the position have all been in contact with me, and they're all expressly interested due to personal and um, work commitments this evening. They were unable to attend, but they did contact me, and they did let me know that they have continued to express their interest. I apologize. Great. Great. So no. So so just want to make two points and then make a motion. Um, the uh, first is that um, as you might have noticed, the name keeps changing. It kind of started out as barrier free, and then it became inclusive play. And now um, our parks and rec a director this morning told us that sort of the new common sort of theme for this is the universal de a design. So um, we're trying to get the language right. We're trying to do it in such a way that. That, um, you know, we uh, incorporate everybody in and everybody feels a part of it. Um, so the way we structured the committee is, one, uh, we asked for applicants. We asked for people that were um, uh, connected to this community of the dev uh, people with uh, families with developmental disabilities. And so we've got a, a great list of applicants. We have more spots available. It's my understanding the position's already been reposted. And so we're already entertaining more. Uh, applicants. So at this point, I'd like to move that we appoint the people that have applied so far. That then allows us to get started, starting to do bylaws, starting to do committee organizational structure type things, and then we can continue to add value through more Sup people. I'll support that. Yep. Okay. I'm in agreement with that. We've done that with several committees recently, and there's no sense making everyone come back a second time. All right. Do we need We're, to... He made a motion, and we've got to support... Yeah, do you need a motion to... to post for the other open position. No, it's already it's being, it's automatically yep. being redone. We already did that, right? right? So yeah. we did it as a matter of uh, like oh, a process sense. automatically without having to. Okay. Yep, do and it. And then I just okay. got one quick comment. Um, so I think that universal design, that's that's actually a legal term. It's a step above ADA. And there's a couple of different uh, ways you can qualify to become universal design. I think one of the, the uh, most common is to involve uh, people with blindness. Um, and I think by including that, uh, you can actually go for a lot more grant money. So I just wanted to point yep. that out. It's not just not just a name change. Like that, right. that's a very much a proactive step that you guys are taking. So. Yep. Yep. Here. Mr. Gillingham. Yes. 
Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mrs. Smeltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And item two is introduction of applicants for the Downtown Development Board. Dear board members, there are six terms up for the expiration of the Downtown Development Authority. Terms are for four years and will expire January 5th, 2024. The authority was created pursuant to Act 197. The authority shall be a public body corporate under the authority of the township. The authority may adopt a seal, may sue, and be sued in any court of, the, of this state and shall possess all the power necessary to carry out the purpose of its incorporation as provided by Act 197 and Ordinance 338. Two applications for reappointment were received from Carol Dorian and Patrick Moran for, Moran, Moran for appointment to Downtown Development Board, which are attached for your review. Mm -hmm. Per the policy guidelines, an invitation has been extended to all applicants to attend the February 3rd, 2020 board meeting in which they will be provided an opportunity to introduce themselves to the Board of Trustees, whereby each being given a three minute time limit in which to do so. Thank you, Stephanie Middlestad, Administrative Assistant. Thank you, and everyone I think knows that Carolyn Dorian is the owner of Dorian Ford and Pat Moran is the owner of Moran Chevrolet. I would make the same motion that Mr. Gillingham did on the first item, that these two have been long-standing members and, and good members, that we appoint them tonight. Support. Support. Supported by Mrs. West. Discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Gannon. Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Argona? Yes. Mr. Gillingham? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Item three. Lowe's outside permit request, Gratiot Avenue. Did, uh, Mr. Cannon, before we move on, should we make note of the fact that I think the um, the Gratiot DDA is reposted? It is also reposted. Okay, and so the, there are uh, positions available, yep. and um, we encourage uh, people from the area to apply. Lowe's of South Clinton Township, 35115 South Gratiot Avenue, Clinton Township, Michigan, 40035, would like to obtain a permit from February 10th, 2020 through October 31st, 2020. The permit will be used for outside storage of mulch, soil, bag goods, and fencing. The plans we have are the same as last year. I have attached a blueprint for your reference. The store manager, Daniel Karpinski, would like to attend your town hall meeting on February 3rd. Please let me know if you need any other information. Thank you, Brian Sierski, ASM Merchandising, Lowe's of South Clinton Township, 1716. We've never had an issue with them. They, they keep everything up nicely and put it away when they need to. Move to approve. Support. Thank you. Roll call, please. Uh, wait, hold on a second. Yeah. I think we got somebody who needs Plus, to. they're here. Behind Sam, yep. can you wait a second? Oh, because sure. there's somebody who actually is. Hi. Uh, you'll have to do that under public comment. Oh, okay. So is, is Daniel Karpinski here then? I'm here. Okay. Did you want to come speak to this item? I'm sorry, Mr. Supervisor. Yeah, here, but. And I would just work it in quite, quite <laughs> frankly. <laughs> yeah, well, I just want to be approval. We've done it for the last few years. Uh, we've tried to maintain standards more and more every year. Uh, so I would uh, request if you could approve it. And with that, I just want to let you know that we do do multiple uh, donations and and we do uh, charity events <clears throat> for, and we do a lot of volunteer work. So uh, this year I did submit something to the, uh, I think the clerk's office to see if there's any requests needed. But we'd also be interested in uh, possibly uh, seeing what the universal playground mm -hmm. entails and I might be able to go up through our corporate for more funding. Fabulous. Yay. Mr. Gannon, they have been, Lowe's of, uh, on 15 <laughs> Mile Road has been to me. very, <laughs> you guys have been very attentive to the needs of the community and we really appreciate your donation to the robotics team, uh, Clintondale High School, and that was a great um, offering to the students and just those are the types of things that you've done. I know you've also built a ramp for um, a disabled veteran, <clears throat> excuse me, and I thought that was just incredible, the work that you guys are doing, so we really appreciate it. And that you're always following up and making sure there's, if there's a need there, that um, you work with the local municipality to get we it done. Just recently, this, this uh, spring, we just recently helped the women's shelter uh, repaint some of their stuff inside their building as one of our projects. So Excellent. Mr. Keyes told me one time, he's like, I'm just kind of concerned with the exterior building, so I've been extra trying extra hard to keep it clean, so. 
Actually, that's all I want to do is compliment you on that. And I, what I do appreciate is sometimes these get um, common. Every year, you know, we get a permit or a request, and businesses stop showing up to represent themselves. And I just appreciate a familiar face that you're always here and able to um, have us reach out to you with any concerns. And the exterior has looked very good. So I appreciate that. Thank you. If you call our office, my office tomorrow, I'll make sure that your information gets to the lady that just left, unfortunately. Okay because uh, I'm sure she's going to be interested in discussing what they would like to do with you. Okay. I'll Thank see you. if we can help. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, sir. Um, my concern on this, I, I have no concern with Lowe's. I think they do a great job all the time, and I shop there quite often. But this permit is from February to October for a special land use, and I believe you can only approve it for six months at a time. They would have to come in for a renewal. We have done that before where we've approved if I may, that the six month, uh, I believe, pertains to structures and temporary uses with regard to um, the, the tent structures and approvals from the board. I don't think we've ever adhered to anything like that with the outdoor display type provisions? I, I just mentioned it because I know last year you approved even tents for more than six months. And at the time, it doesn't say in there it's for any special land use, from what I understand. You can only do a temporary use for six months. And like I said, I like Lowe's. I go there all the time. I think they do a great job. I just think you might want to follow the rules. If I uh, may, we are following the rules. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I yes. just want to address the fact this is not a special land use. Special land use is completely different. This is an outdoor display. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mr. Gillaham? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item 4, Site Plan Development for Valley Transportation. This commission has made review for, of plans for site development for land fronting the west line of Grosbeck north of 15 Mile Road in consideration of grant of certain variance by the Clinton Township Board of Appeals and finds the plans are in compliance with the requirements of Clinton Township Planning and Zoning Code and those of other replying reviewing agents, recognizing that the engineering analysis is for preliminary purposes only. We hereby make recommendation for approval of the site development plans as recommended for approval on November 14, 2019 with the subsequent Zoning Board of Appeals approval on January 15, 2020 and the conditions set forth. This action was approved by unanimous vote and copies of the plans and pertinent data of record are enclosed for your information and file. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> This matter was petitioned by Mr. Alice Velick of Velick Trucking 35349, Grossbeck, Clinton Township, Michigan 48036, is represented by Mr. Ronald Chiza, AIA of RA Chiza Architects 343260, Garfield Road, Suite 210, Clinton Township, Michigan 48038. We submit this proposal for consideration and would appreciate advisement of your determination. Sincerely, Catherine Cherry, Secretary for the Clinton Township Planning Commission. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Would you please Briefly describe the, the variances that the ZBA granted the other evening. Absolutely. Um, the proposal here is to redevelop a good portion of this site. Uh, the main function is a 15,000 square foot building for a trucking company. Uh, the two variances that were requested and that were approved by the zoning board, uh, one was for a parking setback variance. Uh, this being an I-2 zoning, the ordinance requires 60 foot front yard parking setback. Uh, they went with a 36 and felt that it was um, uh, similar to uh, properties both north and south, and then uh, they requested a waiver or a variance from some of the screening requirements along the north and, and west side of the sites um, uh, because of existing natural vegetation that, that existed within those areas. And uh, uh, Mr. Cannon, on, at the December 11th meeting, uh, the Zoning Board did uh, vote to grant both of those variances. So the plan that you have uh, right now meets or exceeds all ordinance requirements and is ready to be approved. I have one additional question, and that's the paving behind what used to be, and I don't know if it still is or not, a fence company. It appears that it's going to not be concrete, that it will be gravel, and that it will be available for Velic to use for parking their trucks. Does that meet our ordinance? Yes, it does. 
yes, they are they are proposing to pave a good portion of this property, uh, but there is not anything within the ordinance that that requires that that area that you're referring to be paved. Um, the uh, section of the ordinance um, that that really refers to open storage, and that's what is proposed there, um, is um, merely states that open storage facilities shall be kept in orderly kept orderly in appearance and shall be maintained in a clean, clean safe condition. Um, it does not specifically state that <coughs> paving is absolutely required in this particular case. So while they are proposing to pave a good portion of this property, uh, some of that property um, at the rear of that fence company is to remain in its current graveled condition. Mr. Pearl? <clears throat> yeah, um, we were able to see the full site plan, the large size. Um, and let me tell you, that's a big difference what's there. Um, it's, it's a shame that the petitioner has been using the site for a number of years the way it is without a site plan approval. And he's finally come in to correct that. And he's showing a brand new building, landscaping in the front with a berm and a fence. In the, even in the back, there's going to be... We're, there's a requirement that he put slats in the chain link fence along the railroad track. So the, uh, the people to the north, the, develop, the owner of the property to the north was happy with the setbacks and the way it was going to be developed. And, and this will be a big change for McDonald's to see a paved area right there and landscaping. You can see the amount of landscaping that's going to go in around there. So I think it makes a big difference and corrects uh, uh, a problem, really an eyesore right now. So with the new building, you can see it'll look more like an office, and it'll be uh, the parking you won't even see because it'll be uh, shielded with the uh, berm and the trees and the fence that'll be in the front. So I think it corrects a glaring problem that exists in this property now, and if we didn't approve this, he could still go ahead and use the property with a site plan as long as he did the shielding of the area to the north, south, west, and east. But this way, we're approving him putting a lot of money in and fixing this place up. So I'll move at this time that we approve the site plan development plans as submitted. Is there a second? Support. I, I would ask that the motion maker <clears throat> and supporter with the slats ask that our planning department have some, or our building department have some input into it, because sometimes those slats just aren't a good quality and they end up breaking and bending. I have no problem with slats, but yeah, there are okay. some that are much better quality. Yeah, I'll put that into motion. Thank you. That's fine. Yes, sir. Yes, Sam Bushel, 18546 Wayland Drive. Um, I would point out that under the ordinance that, that allows variances, one of the main things, and this is a shall, the spirit of the zoning code shall be observed and substantial justice done. Well, the, like I said, you can go, you can go to the uh, townhouses behind and you can see there is no vegetation in between them and this property. The only vegetation that was there was some grass, and it's basically the, tra the railroad tracks on it. Uh, that's why I had put in the questions that I did last week, or two weeks ago, uh, under public comments as to the legality of the uh, variances, because the power lines that they used, and there again, you can look at the meetings, the power lines that they used are their own power lines. It, it, they don't go to any place else, and they were put in there by the prior owner that owned the north, pro the pro north property, the north, and also to the back. Should the uh, when you look at the plan in full color, the one part of it that even the uh, per the petitioner said was an ugly building, uh, their grandfather in the use of that, and yet they're putting a fence in, a new fence in, to fence it off from Velik, so Velik can use this back area in gravel. The lady to the north at the ZBA. She pointed out that she did not want her customers to have to look at a cyclone fence, very clearly. Uh, and so there's nothing there. The other thing is because the spirit of the zoning code shall, and there again it's a shall, be observed and substantial justice done, there's no reason, there's no other than financial, to not put in the required screening. And I think the south end we deserve to have the screening as, you know, you have these, you know, you're granting variances for no hardship. There is no legitimate hardship. I would have appreciated if the board had had, the, I hope all the board members had wanted to get them questions answered by the attorney that I asked two weeks ago. It gave you the time to look into it. 
And to say you're cleaning up the area substantially, well, that's just fine, but I think we deserve, in the South End, we deserve the minimums to be upheld. And there again, that the zoning code shall be observed and substantial justice done. And in this case, it is not. The, the hardship is power lines that they own, the fact that there's a new fence that's actually making the gravel area in the back, which isn't, by the way, isn't on this site. The site plan covers these other part, lots. It doesn't cover that lot. And it wasn't pointed out at the Planning Commission that they were going to put a fence in and the gravel was going to be there. Supposedly, that was all going to be the grandfathered use. Well, it's not a grandfathered use if all of a sudden Velic Transportation is getting it. And there again, you have the, the, basically the problem here is it's overdeveloped. You have the, the uh, communication tower in there that is also there again. If you put up the plan again, you'll realize it's part of these three lots and it's kind of fenced off as not being part of the site plan. I think an awful lot of stuff is going on here. And I think that the, the board should want to follow the law. Thank you. Just, um, <coughs> go ahead. Yeah, just a comment that uh, for the audience, the, um, the board is not reviewing the ZBA um, ruling. That is not revo reviewable by this board. The Planning Commission is a recommending body. The zoning board is not. The only one that can review that is the circuit court decisions. So we're looking at the whole site plan with the variances approved. We're not here to rule on those variances. We're looking at the whole site plan the way it's approved by the Planning Commission and the ZBA. Behind the property is a utility and a raised train track, which does provide a bit of a, a visual buffer too. The ZBA has to take into account their experience and the variance request and the evidence presented by the petitioner, public comment, and their own, the ZBA members' own experience to make a determination for, of hardship and or practical difficulty. I know that I read the material that you submitted. They in no way broke any laws, but made a very informed decision based upon the evidence presented. Further comments? Mr. Gillingham? So um, to our planning uh, director, um, this this fits within the zoning, correct? It's a it, it's an I two, trucking is allowed in an I two, correct? That is correct. Okay. Correct. It is a permitted use yeah. by right in the district. So it's right. a permitted use, okay? And right now, it doesn't look very nice, and this provides paving of the parking lot, or at least the majority of the parking lot. It provides a building. It provides. Although not as far of a setback, additional um, uh, a landscaping uh, in the front of Grossbeck to improve the look of Grossbeck. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. Okay. And the fencing is along the sides of the property, not really seen too much from Grossbeck. Um, and it's along the McDonald's and another industrial property. Is that correct? The, the, no. If I may, Help the, me with that. the yeah. plan uh, that you have um, provides a, a screening fence <coughs> along the entire south side of the site. So there will be a fence installed, a vinyl fence, to screen the site from the commercially zoned property to the south. Um, the original request from a variant standpoint by the petitioner was to allow chain link fence right. along the west and along the north. Um, after concerns expressed at the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Zoning Board of Appeals agreed to allow uh, the variance along the north side and allow the chain link along the west, but requested that the chain link along the west side include slats. And so, in essence, it was a variation of the, uh, of the request by the petitioner to take into account the evidence that was presented that night. So south side, solid vinyl fence, west side, chain link fence with slats, north side, chain link fence. And then at the front of the property, there's a combination of berming, landscaping, uh, screening in, in, from a landscaping standpoint, and then as well uh, a wrought iron looking decorative uh, aluminum fence uh, So uh, along the, what would be really kind of the building side of the property. Okay. I'm going to close on this, and that is um, I see this as an improvement. I see this as us um, improving uh, an area of the township that needs improvement. Um, but it's also my understanding that they've been running 
uh, a trucking operation without permission, and as a result of that, how do we make sure that what we see there actually comes to fruition? And if I may, uh, I, I appreciate you making that statement because I did want to make clear. We are currently uh, with uh, Mr. Miller and myself working with uh, the property owner and their legal counsel at, at uh, very basically bringing the, the temporary use that's there to, to a closure. Um, and so we're looking at an agreement right now that would allow them to put up temporary fencing, um, store vehicles at the rear of the property uh, while they're actually constructing this particular development. And so we're looking at it, making sure that we include language in that that, in essence, gives a sunset date. That if we're going to allow the temporary use there, we, we want some assurances and whether it's a sunset date or whether it's a bond that's submitted. Right. Um, we're still in the process of working those things out. Uh, but that's really kind of what we're looking at as a as part of this process it's not something obviously you're considering tonight it will be something that would ultimately be bought, brought back to this board for you to make a decision so that in this case will give you kind of that extra grasp to hold on to and say then we're going to expect it to be done you know by x date and and hopefully we'll get more assurances for you but it's an agreement that the board will have to decide on ultimately okay okay so we're getting improvements but we're also building in a system of accountability, and it'll be brought back before the board. I think it's in our public interest. That's absolutely our goal, sir. Okay. Mr. Aragona? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, Mr. Thompson mentioned something I kind of wanted to expound upon. Uh, see, I mentioned there was somebody at the Planning Commission uh, who was concerned because her property is directly, is, is right next to this property. To the north. Um, and she was concerned about a chain link fence. Uh, however, she didn't quite see the plans. I did talk with her after. So I want to let the board know that she was very happy with the uh, landscaping that was going to be done. And she's also at a section where you're actually going to see more of that iron fence rather than uh, chain link to the to the far back. So um, once I had talked with her, she was very happy with the plans that were submitted. Thank you. Is the petitioner here, or representative? I heard very carefully what Mr. Thompson just said about the fact that you're working with us to get the project completed. But what I'd like to know is when are you going to start, and what are some points along the way that we can look for? All right. First off, I'm Ron Chiesa, the architect for the project, R.A. Chiesa, Architects 43260 Garfield, Suite 210, Clinton Township, Michigan. Uh, right now, because we are tr just trying to get final site plan approval, obviously no architectural drawings have been developed beyond the site plan approval package because, again, there's no guarantee until you get site plan approval. No civil engineering has started at this point in time. Those two processes take anywhere from four to six months. We also have to look at permitting phases. We also have to look at bidding, contractor selection, and financing. You're adding another two to four months on top of that. So, you know, best case scenario for my client would be a late fall or possibly spring of 2021 for a start of construction. Again, there's a lot of variables that are out of our control, his control regarding permitting and whatnot. Um, even at this process, we started this process in August. So we're at, you know, five, six months just to get to this point. So um, my client's looking to make a major investment into the community. Uh, we feel that uh, it's a nice improvement to the site, obviously. It will be one of the nicer looking buildings that's up and down the corridor. Um, so with that being said, that's the best that we can do in a timeline. Like I said, we haven't even gotten into developing our architectural plan, so we don't have our, our engineering done. Uh, civil engineering has not even been let out because you can't let it out because you don't know is this project a guarantee to be approved. So all that stuff has to start. So um, I think to say when is this construction going to start, that's, that's very difficult. Um, I know that my client's attorney has been working with Mr. Thompson, Mr. Miller, and your legal department regarding timing on things, and I believe they have some stipulation going back and forth that they're anticipating that March of 2021 would be kind of like the onset of when the, the late period of when construction would start on this project. 
but again, it can get tied up. We've got a project that's involved with engineering in this community that's going on probably six, seven months where it's still not through civil engineering as things go back and forth through various reviews. So it takes time to go through that process. So we just can't say, all right, August 1st, construction's gonna start. So hopefully that addresses that question. One of the things I do wanna clarify, the power lines that are on the site are contiguous. They go up and down growth spec. It, I know, I know it that. is not, just for this site. Mr. Miller, Mr. Thompson. I just wanna make a, sure. go ahead. for the record, there's never been the, any discussion of a date in March of 2021 with my office. It's just, and uh, as far as the representations made here, uh, I, I haven't been privy to any sort of suggestion that it's going to take that much time to get this project initiated. So it seems like an awfully long time to get going. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I, you know, I think as developments occur, they they come in different, all different shapes and sizes, right? And it's not something that the township or the planning department can really dictate or or you know. Put, ha put a handle on, right? It's each development is different. Um, it has different aspects. It, it has different things that need to get approved, uh, depending upon whether you're going to go just to the building department or whether you're going to go to engineering or whether your engineering needs to go to the county uh, or MDOT. Uh, this is on an MDOT road. So um, it, it's, it's really difficult to say it's going to be in, you know, most cases it's this length of time. Um, I think that what the ordinance hangs its hat on is that a site plan is good for 18 months. You know, there, there are sunset dates in the zoning ordinance that apply to a case like this. Um, and, and so um, that's really what we have to go on. Otherwise, um, really, we're dealing with this temporary use. Um, you know, does that give us the advantage to maybe, you know, you know tighten the reins a little bit? I, I think so. I mean, that's something that we, we have to discuss with... Um, with Velix attorney um, and, and work on an agreement on. But I, I think ultimately they're under the same rules and regulations as any other site plan that comes in. That site plan is good for 18 months. Uh, if they don't pull a permit within 18 months, the site plan's gone and they have to start over. Um, so, you know, the, the issue with the current use of the property and requesting a temporary use, that, that sits outside what you're, you're looking at today. They're two completely separate issues. Um, so it, Mr. Miller, it's I know hard you have to, something you want to say. Yeah, it, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, the the issue of what's going on on that site right now is in 41B District Court. I'm handling that case right now. They have a 30-day timetable with which to get a approvable plan and an agreement in place in this board to hear that agreement and agree to that agreement. And then be, the, that has to be decided before we get back to 41B, before we go to trial. So. There's a timetable built in right now with that, and then this board will then hear that presentation as to what what they're gonna what they're gonna present to us to see what we can come up with in an in an, in an agreement. So I think at this time, obviously, the, the place to go with this is 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 to decide on what the project is going. We'll handle the litigation at 41B. We come up with it. We bring it. We come up with an agreement. We bring it back to the board. The board makes a decision on whether or not that temporary use can go forward. So we will have another bite at the apple. It, it seems like this is such a long time period. Mr. Cannon, we've already had this property owner in court to get compliance. And we're now at a point where we're hoping to resolve this matter. But obviously, activities occurred that were not compliant with the ordinance. So that's the framework that we're starting with. Uh, I made it clear to their attorney that at least from my perspective as the attorney on behalf of the township that simply relying on issuing another ticket if they don't meet deadlines or at the expiration of a site plan where they'll just come back and ask to have it renewed isn't sufficient. It, it's my view that we need to have stronger controls if they're going to continue the temporary use during the period of construction. And just the fact that Mr. Kiesa stood up tonight and started listing out uh, all these different factors that he believes could lead to uh, delays and in effect suggested that these delays can't even be approximated with any dates 
is another indication that I do think, at least from my viewpoint, I would suggest that we have some economic controls over any temporary uh, utilization of the site. Thank you. That's what I was getting to. Mrs. Meltzer, you had a comment? I, I, I believe that um, okay. Mr. Thompson uh, covered it when, I, when he was speaking. Mr. Keyes. Thank you, Mr. Cannon. Um, actually, to the petitioner, Sam, if you wouldn't mind switching. Sure, sure. No, no problem. So what I'm hearing, though, through the chair to Mr. Dolan is that we want to use every tool possible to hold this, this company and this development accountable. Um, one of the things you had said at the podium here was that you need a guarantee from us. What's guaranteed is driving on Grosbeck, seeing that property is a disappointment right now, and it has been for a long time, and it doesn't take a permit approval or anything like that to move the vehicles that are right on Grosbeck as an eyesore. Um, I really hope that you are listening to what this board is saying tonight and understanding, hopefully through the planning and even through the zoning board process, that there is a frustration about the property. I understand you're the architect and, you know, that's, um, you know, maybe th this is directed at the wrong person, but if this is your client, if you can go back and communicate this, we need to be able to hold them accountable. And I just want to ask our employees here, is holding off on approving this one of those tools? Or is this moving it forward so that way we can get to the tools that would be able to hold them accountable? That's what I'd like to know before voting. Well, what I heard was if we don't approve, he's not going to do anything else. He's, he's going to stay right where he's at. But I, it sounds like we, you know, that that's unacceptable to me, obviously. And if our attorneys and our employees are telling us that they're going through court with other tools, I, I'm not going to reward someone telling me that they're holding us. Mike, you mind if I yeah, comment absolutely. on Absolutely. So the way I'm seeing this is this is we got... <clears throat> We got two hands out. We got a carrot in one hand and a stick in the other, right? Mr. Tom, uh, uh, Barry is, is currently in district court with him, right? So it, it, from what I'm gathering from these guys is that should be a motivator. We're going to give you your carrot. Do you want to improve this site? Okay, that's fine. It looks good. I, if you look at the renderings, I mean, the front of the building, that seems like something that, that I would like to see on Grossbeck rather, especially rather than what's there. But if you don't, we're already in court with you. We're already got you on a couple of different ordinances, and all of a sudden, this can all go away. But to get the carrot, they didn't come in and just comply with everything we said. They came in and went to two other committees and said, we don't want to follow the, the rules that are set out. We'd like you to amend them for us and then give us the carrot. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess I that's my frustration. I, I, I yeah. guess I'm not seeing your, your, where you're going with that. Just to point out that every project that goes in to a planning community, you stop at a certain point with your drawings until you get final site plan approval. Then the owner knows that the project is a go. Now they will pay their architect and they will pay their civil engineer and their structural engineer and any consultant that's involved to continue on with the project. If a project gets denied final site plan approval, it basically stops because no one's gonna spend the money to design a building, go through that process just because. I respectfully disagree completely you. with your statement. Yeah. Your, your site plan approval, as you know, you've been an architect for many years. Correct. All right? Site plan approval is essentially making a plan that crosses the T's and dots the I's so that it's compliant with the ordinances. You're not asking for a discretionary decision. This isn't rezoning. You're not at the mercy of a body that has discretion in the decision it makes. You dot your I's, you cross your T's, you get your site plan approved. And standing in front of this board and making the suggestion that you have to wait until the last possible moment to start the ball rolling on getting your engineering prepared because you might not That's get true. site plan approval, I consider that not to be yes. an honest an honest. Mr. Chair, uh, of what no, the safe plan process is. Mr. Chiesa, you know that. No, I, I could tell you I've been doing this for 25 years. No client will pay you 100% to do a project when they know that the community is not going to welcome that project. That's a fact. I have never been paid for a job without having site plan approval. They will pay you a percentage to get you to site plan approval, and if the project doesn't get approved, it stops. It, that's that's just no, the we, way it is. We get that. We understand that. But, but my concern is you're talking about March of 2021. 
the, when, the, when you're the, already the operating right. illegally right, right now. Right. Thank you. May, may, may I please yes. say that? Because that's an important note here. May, yes. May if I can. You're already, Wait, your client. I got okay. Go ahead. Take it. Take it. It's, it <laughs> sounded like it would be easier for us to make this decision if we knew that in two months this was going to be done. In four months this was going to be done. I'm afraid you're talking March, that's 14 months? Mm -hmm. Well, we can't control the permit process. And like I said, a civil engineer has not been retained on this project. It takes months to do these projects. That's just a fact. So, you know, I'm sure if you talk w with the professionals in your building, that they'll agree with that statement. This is not a short term thing. Builders, home builders are telling clients one year to build your house. You know, things are slow right now. The trades are down. There's not a lot of trades. So everything takes time. So uh, again, in the March 21st was a document that's, that my client's attorney has sent into this township. It, Mr. Thompson's had it, and I believe Mr. Miller has it. I was under the impression that it, that it went to your legal also. I'm out of, I'm not involved in that aspect of it. I'm just here to represent the project. Okay, Mrs. West. Thank you. I just have one question. How long have they been there like that illegally? Four years. Four or five years. At least four years. Four, four years. years? Do you know how long have you been there illegally? My clients had the property for, I believe, four years. But I mean, okay. I can, I can address that. They, they originally started using it in low volume probably back in around 2015 and then steadily increased up until 2018 when I started the viol or I'm sorry, early 20, yeah, early 2018 when we started the violation process with them. At that point, they were going through an interior alteration on the building next door, the fence company building. Um, to move their offices there. At that time, that's when we started the process with issuing citation for the illegal use of the property, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, ultimately why they're here today. They, we, we started that process to get them in compliance. They, in turn, hired their architect to start the process with the site plan. But we are still in court. It, mm -hmm. has, been, it has been adjourned multiple times because the court has given, they are showing effort on their end to get an approved site plan. At this point, the courts do want to make a ruling on this. They gave me one last final adjournment for 30 days to come up with an agreement, and we'll see where we go with this. I mean, at this point, we still have to make, the, the courts will have to make a decision in 30 days based on where we're at in the process with ballot trucking. So at this point, obviously, this is another step in the right direction to get a site developed that we're trying to get in compliance. The board will still have, again, another chance to hear the temporary situation. And at that time, if there's no agreement in place, they're just going to have to move them out. And the court will, well, the, we'll let the courts decide on what they'll be able to do. I can't, I can't speak for the courts. Right. But, right. I mean, the intention of the township would be if, the, if there's no agreement in place, the township, me being the enforcing agency of the township, will be pushing to have those trucks off-sited with the courts, and then the courts will decide on what that what happens with that. Thank you, Mr. Pearl. Thank you. You know, what I said to begin with is that I wasn't happy with the way the petitioner was using that property, and it's been echoed by other board members. Um, let's not kid ourselves, though. Uh, I know a lot of properties that we gave site plan approval, wise guys, for no, nothing the gentleman could do. He couldn't get the uh, owner yet to, to Start that. How many years has that been? He's been trying to get it going. Um, there's other developments. There's a couple of them on Harper and uh, Union Lake that have been years. We approved apartment complexes, condos. They were never built. You know, for one reason or another, site plan approval isn't a guarantee for that. But I do want to say that there's two different things going on here. The site plan approval, irregardless of the variances, is pretty straightforward at this point, Mr. Dolan. Wouldn't you agree? You know, cross the T's and dot the I's. Okay. So, but we found a lot of people 
either for whatever reason can't get financing or can't or something goes on. But on the other situation, he's in court. Barry can, he's allowed, as the planning director has indicated, to park trucks there, but not without site plan approval. Is that site plan approval the minimum going to screen the property? Is that what you're looking for, for use of it? What is the site plan? Site plan's not going to make him build a new building if he doesn't want to build it, correct? Mm -hmm. What's the zoning going to allow him to do with that property? Zoning, he, he can't use that property. I mean, he, there, was, there were comments earlier about him just being able to throw up a fence and throw a bunch of trucks back there. That's not the case. Mm -hmm. um, he still has to meet building code requirements, mm -hmm. township ordinances. Um, to utilize a vacant property, which is ultimately what that is. They tore down the old carousel there, and that's been a vacant property since. It's still vacant. Right now it's being utilized. What's the best case scenario that we can make him do if he doesn't do this site plan as directed? Vacate. No, mm -hmm. I, okay. Then, I mean, if they don't so develop it, it needs to va be vacated. He's got to put a building? No. He could combine the parcels and just run out of the office that's there and just screen it. Okay, so screening. So he this can. is much more desirable than yes. just screening. Yes. Okay, that's all I'm saying is, there, is that we still have an alternative to force him by court action to do the right thing. The we won't minimum. get this development. Mm -hmm. Giving him, and I agree that we should get a better schedule than what you've been indicated. In other words, does he have the ability... To, to get financed or not. Is he, does he, you know, the rest of it, he needs to give us a better timetable so we can look at it at some point. But I think we need to approve this and get going and still stay in court and get that resolved. If I may, Mr. Pearl, I think that timetable could be addressed during the next meeting that would be brought forward with what the courts have basically dictated to Valak Trucking is that they need to come to an agreement with the township over the temporary use. I agree. I, at that time, that's when we need to sit down and iron out a timetable. Ta time really, if the position is really serious, he's got to give us an aggressive timetable to get this done the best he can do. And One of the things I do want to point out is it's very hard to secure funding without complete plans. We've got a project that we design in another community my client could not get financing until the drawings were done. And even when the drawings are done, they, the bank starts to do their appraisal. And if their appraisals don't come back enough to support the cost of that building, the project basically gets shut down or it has to be looked to be downscaled. So there's nobody that's gonna be able to be financed already in place before the plans are done and a bank can see the completed architectural and engineering plans. And then once the bank does that, then they start to go out and they look at comps to see what's comparable at that point to assess their value. Well, maybe it's got to be through the court action, even with this approved, that you, you've got to come in compliance and um, with whatever we work out with the building department. And then you can go forward with this but whatever they required to, to stay there or vacate while this is being done. Mr. Gilliam. Mr. Chesa, so you've instructed us on what the challenges are from the perspective of your client. Are you catching the concept as to what the challenges are from our perspective? Oh, I'm Which very... is <clears throat> we want to see a professional development there. You have clients that are operating illegally. We're saying we're ready to put a hold on the court proceedings, allow your plans to move forward, and then ask you to move up your timeline to get a good development there. And it appears you're digging a hole by explaining to us what all of your challenges are and not recognizing what any of our challenges are from the perspective of speaking for our community that I, wants a professional development. There. I, I, I totally understand where the community is coming from. I've been, my office has been in this community for, for 20 years. I understand the, where you're coming from. All I'm explaining to you is the, the way the typical client-architect relationship <laughs> works. 
I can so, appreciate that. So, and, and with saying that, you know, my client wants to do the project. As Mr. Thompson said, a, a typical site plan approval is good for 18 months. 18 months takes you way beyond any timeline that I'm talking about. And again, that timeline is, is not controlled by us. I see us bending over backwards here, and I see mm -hmm. you telling me what all of the hurdles are to uh, work with us. We're saying we want to work with you, we want to get this, and you're saying, hey, you need to know about these challenges here. And It's not uh, a challenge. What I'm telling you is the normal process it takes to do a project of this volume. That's what I'm telling you. I, so, I, you know. The volume? It's, it's a 15,000 square square foot building on a four acre site. So right. there's a lot of work that goes into putting this project together, both architecturally and engineering. What we've okay. completed to this point is a very small percentage of that work. Preliminarily, they're saying, have a meeting, figure out what we do with the court proceedings to decide if we're gonna per continue to pursue your clients in court and you come to the table with an aggressive plan to make sure that you help meet the needs of the community. I'm and not you're involved. still telling I'm, us what all the concerns are. I, I'm speaking as the architect of the project, not as the attorney representing the client and, and talking with, with the various departments in this building. I'm just telling you what this typically takes to do a project of this size. So I, I'm sorry that that doesn't fit into the scope that, that you're looking for, but I'm just telling you, this is the typical time frame. This is not a two week project. This project has not been designed and engineered. That's offensive. <sighs> no. To suggest to us that you're telling us that this is not a two week project. Seriously? This is not a two. We get Who up here was suggesting that this is a no, two week I'm, project? I, I'm not saying. When you're saying, in a hole, what's the first thing you should do? I'm not Stop saying. Stop digging. Okay. I'm not saying. That somebody I'm said away that. here. What I'm saying is this project is takes months. It's not two, three, four weeks. So until we get the, the go ahead from our client, and no client is going to give you the go ahead until they have a site plan approval. Okay. So well, then the other option is we continue to take you in court for illegally operating out of the site and get a ruling that you're out. Period. And then we all lose. No, exactly. No, we don't. And so no, don't. as a result of that, we're saying we're bending over backwards to work with you, and you're telling us again what all your concerns well, I don't, are. Let me just say, I don't think that, <laughs> that the architect is representing yeah. the attorney. He's the, the person here the speaking but on he's behalf talking about of the site plan. I think you've got to bring in the attorney and the petitioner when we talk about the court action. I think he's only talking about the site plan. He has no authority to talk about anything else. And, you know. I make a motion to postpone this until we can bring somebody in that can Good sort morning. of uh, bring forward a uh, better uh, plan um, and we can arrive at something that makes uh, more sense and is more conducive for the township. Support. So there is a motion already. Uh, well, we're going to. This is an amended motion. We'll vote on the postponement. Motion to table, and then that would but you know, whatever you postpone again is exactly what he's saying. That there's another postponement. He's not the the developer. He's just an architect. Then bring he's somebody in here that can tell us these are the commitments we're willing to make when we're stepping at the table and saying these are all of the commitments that we're going to make. I think it's two separate issues because I'm here to represent my client regarding the site plan approval. We've already gone to planning. We've already gone to ZBA. We were unanimously approved at both of those phases for this. So I'm here just to represent the project and answer any questions. Anything legal and time-wise, that is out of my control. So let's postpone this. To but that has nothing to do with the site you, plan approval of the if building. You postpone it. You got two weeks. Well, two weeks in the greater scheme of things, in two years when oh, they're yeah. talking about actually coming up with something, it's not really that much of time, is it? We have a motion on the floor, but I, my question is to the three of you: Is that court date enough of the stick? as Mr. Aragona indicated, to get us started on the, on the project. Does that give you leverage 
when you talk to their attorney and to their owners to get a, he's given us a, a time frame from the perspective of a vendor as opposed to the owner. I still feel they're two separate issues, but that's my opinion on it. It's, uh, you have a site plan that's going to get approved. We are dealing with the enforcement end already, and it's at the end of what the judge wants to see. We are waiting on, they, they have to come back to the township with an agreement that has to be met and brought back to this board to agree upon, similar to like, similar to situations we've done in the past with other buildings that have been built, similar to uh, Pahoa. We, we allowed a temporary use down the road for that during their construction phases. This is what they want to do, albeit it is resolving an issue that's in court right now. The vial, if they move forward with an approvable site plan, we approve the site plan, we go back to court once, or I'm sorry, then they come with an agreement over the next couple weeks to get something that is agreeable to the board. In a t at that time, there should be a time frame built into it. There should be See, an expectation. We have to there do it be because they can go to court to get the rest. Okay. So and you're recommending we that court. we move forward? Mm -hmm. With the site plan? My recommendation, yes. The site plan is a good plan. It meets the ordinances. It meets the criteria. We are still dealing with the enforcement action through the court system. That would be my and recommendation. And if I may, Barry, when, when are, how long was that first piece? When are they going to be coming back before the board uh, for that temporary use? They have to come. I was in court with them last week, and they have to be back in court the next court date, they said, within 30 days. So this should be within the next one or two board meetings. We should be hearing them. Okay. So I supported the motion. It sounds like I understand what you're saying where it's two different issues. Um, I'm just going to say that my personal opinion is when they do come back before, I thank you very much for being here, sir. I know we've bloodied you up a little bit, uh, but I would personally like to see your client here yes. or very least their attorney. No, I'd like to see your client here. Uh, because that is something for that, that we aspect, need to they that's in their court, yes. Okay. And then just real quick uh, to Barry, um, if we um, suspend the court action, we do have the ability to bring it back forward if we're not able to reach an agreement. Is that correct? Which part? If if we don't reach an agreement, it will go to court, and the courts will have to rule on what the situation is out there today. At that time... I don't know if his motion is still on there. Do you still have a motion to postpone? I don't know yet. Yeah, he does. He did. There's a motion yeah. to postpone. I haven't withdrawn it. I, I ultimately, if there's an agreement that's being worked on, I could, I could potentially ask the courts for an adjournment. I don't know that the courts want to adjourn this any further. It's been adjourned multiple times already. To get to this point, because they were working on site plans, they were working on ZBA approvals. There, there's been things that the courts have accepted as an adjournment. Mr. Keys, um, to the chair, to Mr. Dolan. Yeah, Mr. Dolan. Do you already have something to say? Yeah, to say yes. No, I was going to say that <clears throat> these really are they're related, but they are different. At this point in time, we're operating under our ordinance. They've presented a site plan. If it meets the requirements of the ordinance, then I think we should move forward and approve it. I don't see any reason to delay on the yeah. site plan. Notwithstanding that, what we have is we have a history of noncompliance, mm -hmm. a history of delays, and we're no, being no, we asked to approve a temporary use. Okay. Once that temporary use is in place, right. Right. Ob the obvious like question is, saying. what assurances That's do we point. have that what we see here, this beautiful 15,000 square foot building, is actually going to be timely built as opposed to us continuing with the situation that exists right now, which is really not an acceptable solution. He's operating in non compliance with the ordinances and hasn't been required to invest the capital that he should to make his business compliant with the ordinances. So it's clear. And it should be clear to the applicant that he needs to provide reasonable assurances that this project is going to start on time and proceed on time. Sure, there are things that he doesn't have control over, but he's got a lot of things he does have control over. He has control over as to when he can start searching for an engineer, 
how soon he can hire him, mm -hmm. what he's going to pay him, and what his expectations are of document delivery. And I know that in some cases certain trades may be more difficult to line up than others. But we don't want to be in a situation where we just have a bunch of excuses and just repetitive delays without us having a strong hammer of enforcement. I, I, as I mentioned when we started, I don't think you just want to be in a position of having to go back to court again. Or uh, I, I think we need to have some financial assurances that are mm -hmm. associated with this uh, temporary use. And if he's serious that he does want to build that building, he should have no qualms providing that. If he balks heavily at him, then you have to wonder whether or not he really is serious about timely building. That's good. I agree exactly with what you just said. Mr. Keyes? Yeah, just quickly, I have um, two questions for Mr. Dolan. So the first one is, I agree with you totally that these are two separate things. If we did, so let's just say, uh, suspend the this item in, for another two weeks or for two more meetings uh, while the court process is, is going on, are we in any way slowing down the court process or, or um, lessening our enforcement abilities? I don't think it bears one way or the other, but what it does do is, as he mentioned, he, at, this, at that point he doesn't have an approved site plan. I mean, if he approve it tonight, you know, well, now he can go hire an architect, or right. excuse me, a civil engineer. Okay. Which, frankly, I don't buy the idea at all that he hasn't contemplated already and had contact with civil engineers. Right. The, the notion that you don't lift a finger until after you get site plan approval, I strongly disagree with. I agree. Okay. We, uh, ha we have the no. engineer on board, but there's been no agreement. There's been no contract signed until the project gets approved. That's a standard in every single project in every community. Mr. Chairman, if I may also, the, it, putting this off two weeks will be no, we will be in no different place than we are right now because the court hearing is not going to be for a month. So a postponement of two weeks, you're not going to have any, none of the legal action that I'm dealing with will be resolved. It's still going to be in conversations. Maybe we postpone it. If you're going to postpone it, it could be, you know, you postpone that with so that at the same time, I'm sorry, the that's distracting. Gets put back in place. Yeah, it's, Sam, you that's know. real weird, man. I mean, that, that's that's Sam. You mean Sam? Uh, yeah, I. Yeah. You know, come on. We're trying to listen to our staff here, and we've got people in the audience. I do want to hear what you had to say at the end there. I just, I just don't know that a two week, a two week, two week postponement really gets us no closer to the end game. I mean, that they have a month, according to the courts, to come up with an agreement to work with the township to come to that agreement with regard to the existing situation, which we obviously all agree is not a good situation. I think we let the courts take their take their timetable the way it is. This can be moved along. Obviously, starting the ter start finalizing this approval starts the timetable on their 18 months. Mm -hmm. Postponing right. that a month puts that to 19 right. months. Right. Exactly. I, I just, you know, it's, it's your call. And so then just the second part of that is when we're looking at this, and we may not agree with what the zoning board did, but that's really not what we're considering here today. Right. We don't get a vote on that one. That's correct. Um, and, you know, that's frustrating to me, of course, but it, it's true. Um, now, the one thing I do want to say, though, is I appreciate this conversation. I know, Mr. Cannon, you had said that, you know, everybody loses when the business walks away and the township walks away. I, I do want to say, though, when we have a business that's shown over the last four years that it's not willing to make that investment and work through our process, you know, maybe the conversation has to be that they do need to vacate and we need to use our new economic developer, developer uh, develop? director there, Mr. Pearl, um, that we can then market these properties that people that actually want to stay in Clinton Township right. and actually drive up and down Grosbeck and would be appalled by some of the things they've seen on that property over the last four years. So that's the, the one you know, thought that, that I have. I do want to you. say that my client has spent a quarter million dollars to do interior improvement to the, the building that's currently on site, so as well as whatever he paid for the property. So he has made considerable investment into the community. This is not the first time he's moved into the community. His office was in this community. So, um, you know, I, he obviously wants to do the right thing. 
a lot of people, this is not the first time I've had a client that's, that's done this type of thing. They just, either they're unaware or they just think they bought the property and, and they can use it for a construction yard or whatever. So in any event, you know, as Mr. Miller said, we're, we're trying to move forward with this. Any delays here will just, again, slow us down from starting to develop our package, which will exploit the process regarding the building. Anything with the legal and whatnot, that's being handled by others, you know, uh, and for them to address, not myself. It would have been nice for your clients to be here this evening. Sir, did you have something you wanted to say? Uh, yes, there's a couple things. Uh, one thing is, to the west side, Consumers Energy does have part of the property, but the rest of it is townhouse green. And as I pointed out at the ZBA and at the Planning Commission, you can drive over and go that back to their park you can actually read, until the, their trucks got pulled in the way, you can actually read McDonald's sign. There is no, there is no greenery in between the, the railroad, but the, when the ZBA, when they put out something like this, they have to send out notices. I'm sure, sure Mr. Pearl can tell you how many townhouses got notified. It was in the hundreds. So you are affecting residents very much so. And as far as not having any action against the ZBA, your action is voting against this. Because that, that part of the, if you pull this down, if you got the colored site that was shown at the Planning Commission, that part behind the supposed grandfathered building was, and the grandfathered building that the use wasn't going to change, got to go far a little down. On this one, it shows parking of trucks back there. Shows the new fence. That, all that graveled area that you're going to be approving is directly, it's not in front of, it's not across from consumers, it's across from townhouses. The property of the north has got pavement, the property of the South McDonald's, which is commercial. There again, that's why the, the setback is different from commercial to industrial. The other thing I think you ought to look at is, on the colored one, it shows up better, but those power lines, there is no public easement there. Those are privately owned. They don't go up and down Grossbeck. They go down to this property and they come back out this property. They're only private wires. And that was part of, they said that they, because of those poles is why they had to move forward for the parking was that because their trucks couldn't, you know, negotiate around these power lines. Well, the power lines are theirs, and there again, any one of you could drive out. You can go out to Townhouse Green, drive to the back. You don't have to get out of your car. See if you can see, see if you, they think you, they deserve the screening from what they're seeing now. Hundreds of townhouses that you guys are going to approve, a gravel lot behind them, that there again, if you go get the colored print out of Mr. Thompson's office that they showed at the Planning Commission when they were selling this and what they showed at the ZBA, they don't have trucks parked behind there. Hmm. It's supposedly part of the grandfather business that they put a quarter of a million dollars into, per his just suggestion, and they didn't have to get a site plan for that either. I think we're seeing a real big problem here. Same. But if you care about the residents Scooby. of Townhouse Green, before you approve this, drive out there and see if you can see this property and see if they deserve screening. Thank you. Did you want to leave your motion on the floor, Mr. Gillingham? I'll be voted against. I want to. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, uh, more speakers. Okay. Kathy Boss, 20215 Webster. Um, I live like right in that area. You're talking 15 and Grossbeck. That's um, where I live at. And I have to say, for the past four years, it's been atrocious. It seems to me they didn't take any time at all to be able to tear things up and do whatever it is they want to do. But yet, when they talk about they have to take 18 months in order to even start construction to make it look nice, that doesn't make sense to me. I think that as the neighborhood and the community there, we've put up with a, a lot. And it's all been done illegally. So. Um, to, to maybe have some sort of constraints on it, maybe have them check in every couple of months with you so you can see how the progress is. Um, we would really appreciate that because it is, it's nasty over there. Thank you. That's why I asked the question about 40 minutes ago <laughs> on a timetable. I'd just like to make one statement. The property that's to the west of this is I-2. Of the 300 feet that my client has, only about 30 feet of it, once you get beyond the railroad tracks, about anything residential, it's I-2 zoning behind the project. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And just if I may point out to Kathy's comment, just so you know, once we approve anything, it's not just, all right, you get to go build whatever you want. All of a sudden, we got the Sears Tower in the middle of Clinton Township. Barry's department checks in with them on a regular basis and 
you know, make sure that they have the proper permits, make sure the permits are being followed and everything. So. Okay, we can't, first of all, yeah. no one else can hear you. We'll talk after. Well, Mr. Cannon, if I may, um, I'm originally making the motion to postpone this so that there's time for the owners to come forward to tell us uh, what their plans are, what it is that they think they can accomplish, um, and um, to let them know that we are not satisfied with the responses mm -hmm. that we've gotten tonight in terms of, uh, you know, we're looking for this to move forward. We know that once we approve this, the clock starts ticking, and we're being met with an explanation as to how many potentials there are for delays. Um, so it, with that in mind, um, I think we've made the township board um, a wish is clear that we expect this project to move forward and that once we move forward with it, the clock starts ticking. So, uh, and we're going to leave it to our staff to um, uh, and negotiate these rules and timelines. And so with that, I'd withdraw my motion to postpone. And we will vote on the initial motion. Roll call, please. Can she has to withdraw her support. I'm sorry. Can you withdraw your second? Yes. Okay. Can somebody read the initial motion? It's been so long it's, ago. It's just to approve. To approve that it's just to approve the okay. site plan as okay. submitted. I made Got the motion. It. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Argona? Yes. Mrs. West? No. Mr. Keyes? No. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Gallaham? No. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Item five, final plan approval for Providence Estates Condominiums, a planned unit development, or PUD. This commission has made review of plans for the final plan for, for Providence Estates, a single family site condominium development in the planned unit development PUD district, and finds the plans are in compliance with the requirements of Clinton Township Planning and Zoning Code and those of other replying reviewing agents, recognizing that the engineering analysis is for preliminary purposes only. We hereby make recommendation for approval of the site development plans as dated September. December 26, 2019. This action was approved by unanimous vote and copies of the plans and pertinent data of record are enclosed for your information and file. This matter was petitioned by Mr. M Mario Izzy, Izzy of MJC Land Investments, LLC, 46600 Romeo Plank Road, Suite 5, McComb, Michigan, 48044. We submit this proposal for consideration and would appreciate advisement of your determination. Sincerely, Catherine Cherry, Secretary for the Clinton Township Planning Commission. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. You want to give us an overview of how we got to this point? Yes, very quickly. Um, you saw this, the Township Board did in November, it was November 12th of 2019. This is our actual, our first request under our brand new plan unit development ordinance. It was initially reviewed by the Planning Commission October 24th to rezone it from R2 to PUD. Uh, for a development that you see on the screen. Um, that was both the rezoning and preliminary plan approval. You approved that on November 12th. Uh, they came back with the final plan approval, the second and final step of this uh, process, at least from a, uh, an approval standpoint of the board. Um, the plans were changed slightly. Uh, for the most part, they, they remain uh, substantially the way that you saw them in November. Uh, the changes that were made were a reflection of some of the comments that came in at the public uh, hearing by the Planning Commission. Uh, they increased the buffer along the north side of the property mm. uh, to a 35-foot buffer. Uh, they uh, included berming and landscaping along the entire Romeo Plank side of the property and as well are including an 8-foot uh, walk or path, bike path, um, along that entire frontage as well instead of a standard five-foot sidewalk. So uh, there were concerns expressed about those things. They've, they've revised these plans. At this point, in essence, it, this is the final plan approval for this development as a PUD. I'll, and just as a reminder, uh, if the Township Board approves this, uh, what we'll be then doing is formulating the plan unit development agreement. Uh, it will include a number of things, including the plans that, that you have, um, and that is an agreement that will be signed by the developer and by the township uh, that ties the development of this property to the site plan that you have uh, before you uh, this evening. Uh, so that would be, in essence, the, the final step, and that's then a, an agreement that's recorded uh, and is binding between the two parties. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions? Mr. Aragona? Mr. Easy. 
So just two quick questions that I, I already asked you at the Planning Commission the last time you were before us, but I just want to remind everybody. Uh, to the north, there is a strip of land, correct? Yes, sir. And you're leaving that as uh, basically a natural barrier between this development and the previous development that's already to the north? Yes, sir. Okay, and then how big was that? 35, right? It was originally 30 feet. It is now 35 feet. Perfect. Uh, and then the um, to the east, there's eight acres. Uh, I know there's been some concern about uh, how it's natural woodland. People don't want that to go away. Um, and from our understanding, you're not doing anything with it. You're just going in there and cleaning up any um, uh, fallen deadwood or anything that could potentially be a hazard, right? Correct, yes, sir. For the record, Mario Izzy with MJC Wait, Companies. Yeah, I apologize. 46600 Romeo Plank, suite number five. Um, thank you for your question, sir. Um, to reiterate, reiterate, excuse me, as far as the open space goes, it's intended to be left just as that, as open space. We have concern that when we take title to this property, there could be some safety issues. This property's been unmaintained for over 50 years. We're worried about trees that are leaning, that are dead, that are dying. We just want the right to go in and the open spaces to go in and clean up any dead, dying, leaning trees so that's not a safety issue with the neighboring property owners. As far as development of the property goes, we have to abide by your ordinances, we have to go through the engineering process, the permitting process, et cetera. And then my one last question I didn't ask at the Planning uh, Commission, but something that came up. Um, there was an issue with uh, the Southern Street, Cranston Circle, they are lining up with Cranbrook, and I think you were still uh, discussing the Department of Roads, uh, discussing that with the Department of Roads and whether they were going to grant you um, uh, certain variances, I believe, there. And I believe that actually led to whether you're going to have 65 or 66 homes. So yes, sir. That's exactly that? correct. What we've submitted to you to the township this evening, what you're considering this evening. Uh, we have a plan in front of you for 66 lots. If you look at the, the street layout, the lot layout, our southern approach is not perfectly geometrically aligned with the approach oh. across the street on the other side of Romeo Plank. The road commission, they have jurisdiction over Romeo Plank. Normally they frown on that. We're trying to get an answer from them as to how much leeway they have or if we can go before them to ask for a variance. They may, they may not. Uh, uh, give us that variance. What we've done is provided you through the planning department with an option, with an alternative site plan that pushes the approach so it's perfectly geometrical. It lines up with the approach across the street. That's what the road commission wants, um, but we unfortunately, we lose a lot. So in order to save a little bit of time, we brought two plans before you um, at the discretion, hopefully, of the planning department, they'll be able to allow us to go forward with our engineering and permitting should the road commission not agree to give us the, the optimal layout that we want with the 66 lots. So nothing else changes on the plan. It's just a matter of one lot we lose, and then the, the approach gets pushed, pushed to the north a little bit. So Mr. You. Thompson has expressed that he's in, in agreement with us. Yeah, I think, I think that um, options are always good, right? And, and that's the beauty of a plan unit development ordinance is it gives you that flexibility to approve things like this, to vary from the ordinance, to provide options for development instead of approving it and then it doesn't get approved that way and then we have to start all over again. Um, so I, I'm certainly comfortable with it, no question about it. In fact, um, I wish in the past I had more developers that would provide those types of options in PUD agreements, but uh, a lot of times it's not necessary. But I think in this case, it's a great option for you to approve. It allows this project to move forward. I think this is something uh, we all want to see move forward. This is going to be a great development, and this that option just gives us the ability to keep this project moving in, in a forward direction. So absolutely. Mrs. Meltzer? I'm sorry, I can't tell, but is are there sidewalks going to be, are you guys building sidewalks along the Romeo Plank then for... Yes, ma'am. And that was, will that go all the way to the church? That was one of the significant changes to our site plan from the first time you saw it to now. We okay. added, we were very specific that we added an eight foot wide safety path along Romeo Plank. Um, we noted any ditching or any improvements that we'll have to do under the permit of uh, McDoor, Macomb County Department of Roads. Um, and yes, to answer your question, we, we would normally be required per your ordinance to provide public paths along our frontage. Mm -hmm. We're just, we're upgrading that to eight feet and Excellent. we'll go from property line to property line. Okay. And it, as well as interior sidewalks, those will be installed with each lot being developed, each lot being built mm -hmm. with each home. Yeah, I think it, it looks good. And I think um, 
these houses are going to sell quick. <laughs> I hope so. There's uh, very little inventory in the township right now, so yeah. Thank you. Further discussion? Floor is open for a motion. Move to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mrs. Meltzer, yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Keyes. Yes. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Gillaham. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item six has been deleted. Item seven, approval of appointment to part-time custodial maintenance. Mr. Cannon, just briefly, I don't, when we deleted that, that will be coming back on the, there was a request to put it back on the agenda for the 18th. Thank you. Dear members of the board, the Department of Public Services is recommending the appointment of Mr. Andrew Wentz into the position of part-time custodial maintenance. Based on interview results and civil service testing procedures, the department is confident that Mr. Wenson is well qualified and will be an asset to the township. As a condition of employment, he will be required to successfully complete a background investigation and a pre-employment medical examination, including drug screen. This is a budgeted position per AFSCME 1103.12 contract. The starting hourly wage for the position is set at $16. Upon board approval, Mr. Wenson's first day of employment will be February 10th, 2020. Thank you for your consideration of this matter. Sincerely, William Smith, Human Resources Director. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Support. Support. Support by Mr. Aragona. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. <clears throat> Keyes. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Gillaham. Yes. Mrs. Meltzer. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And item eight, request approval for roof warranty renewals. Dear board members, we are requesting approval for a warranty renewal to cover the roof at the Civic Center as well as fire station number five. This warranty would cover the Civic Center building A, south end of the building 100 wing, and building B, center building 200 wing, as well as fire station number five at 43800 Elizabeth Road. The Civic Center portion is $8,749 and will be paid out of the DPW repair and maintenance budget. The fire department portion of the bill will be $2,917 and will be paid out of the fire repair and maintenance budget. Should you have any questions or concerns regarding this matter, please feel free to contact either of us at any time. Sincerely, Tim Duncan, Clinton Township Fire Chief, and Mary Benner, Director of Public Services. Mr. Pearl? Yeah, uh, if, if the board remembers this uh, came to us six months ago or so. Um, we asked them at the time to go back and do scanning of the of the uh, roofs to see what work was done. They did and the work was completed and now it's appropriate, I think, for us to approve this. Um, the warranties are in, would be in place without additional um, work uh, and there's no question now about the, the uh, strength of the roofs. They've been scanned and there have been minor repairs done under our maintenance uh, contracts. So now we're ready to go to do the warranty. There will be no questions. They're not going to come back and say, oh, we're not going to do this warranty unless you spend more money than what we're requesting. So I think it's appropriate that we approve this tonight. I'll so move. Is there a second? I'll support. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mr. Gillaham? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And item nine is Fire Department Deputy Chief Testing. Dear honorable board members, I'm requesting approval to conduct the deputy fire chief's assessing, assessment testing in order to establish an eligibility list for the deputy chief's position within the fire department. <coughs> the test will be conducted by MCO Incorporated. Once certified by the Police and Fire Ch Civil Service Commission, the list will be valid for a minimum of two years. Following Local 1381 contractual provisions for promotional eligibility, we have 11 candidates that are qualified and interested in testing for the position. It is anticipated that we will need to fill one opening by the end of 2020 and an additional opening will occur prior to the list expiring. The cost to administer the test is estimated to be $15,000 and has been budgeted for the 2020-21 budget cycle. Should you have any questions or concerns regarding this matter, please feel free to contact me at any time. Sincerely, Tim Duncan, Clinton Township Fire Chief. Thank you. The chief has set it up so that this would allow for both positions to be filled with just scheduling one test instead of scheduling a second test, which would cost the same amount of money. So moved. So far. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mrs. Meltzer, yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mr. Gillaham? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And item 10, recommendation from the Personal Vacancy Review Committee. 
Dear board members, the Personnel Vacancy Review Committee met on January 30th, 2020 to review the staffing requirements of two departments. The committee is making the following recommendations. For the Planning Department, the committee unanimously recommends the following. Authorization to create a new position in the Planning Department titled Assistant Planning Director, Economic Development that would coordinate all township economic development initiatives. The new position would be in the same job classification and salary range as the existing assistant planning director position. Annual total compensation for the position would be approximately $141,000. Public Services DPW Division, the committee unanimously recommends the following. Authorization for one additional operator position in the DPW division and the elimination of one authorized maintenance worker position. The change in staffing will provide greater flexibility within the division. The net cost for this change is estimated at an additional $2,600 annually. Sincerely, William Smith, Human Resources Director. Thank you. I'm going to break this into two. So I'll make a motion that we take the second one first, public services, and approve that position as, as recommended. So Support. moved. Supported by Mr. Gillaham. Roll call, please. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Gillaham. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Keyes. Yes. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mrs. Messer. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Mr. Pearl, since you brought forward the planning department position, you have the floor. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I appreciate the board's support in getting this to the um, personal vacancy committee, and, and I appreciate the personal vacancy committee getting it back so quickly. I didn't expect it for, a few, for another meeting. But it, it is an important position. We've talked about it. I know I've talked to Mr. Keese about this position. He brought it up over a year ago. And Mr. Gilliam, I've talked to you about it and other board members over the last six months. And I think it's, it's about time that we fill this position. We need to bring more jobs and more buildings to Clinton Township. We don't need to see more vacant buildings. We need the planning department, and I've said this before, does not have time to do this job. Um, they are busy with zoning and planning matters, and they just cannot put a full-time person on this. So consistent with other communities that have this, they've done a lot better with a full-time uh, staff member that's just doing economic development. Mr. Smith has provided us with a uh, draft, um, which I'd like to incorporate a job summary. If there's any other changes anyone wants to make to it. The only thing I saw was the under education and experience that the certification has a certified economic developer um, by the IEDC should say is required, not desirable. I believe that's just a two-week course. So it should be a part of their specs. Two days. Two days? Two days? Yes. Oh, excuse me, two days. Okay. Um, I think there's a lot of things that are incorporated in, and Mr. Smith put some time in this. If you look on the internet, you'll see that every community out there has uh, either a, either has a economic development person or is looking for one. And there's many job descriptions out there that fit pretty much what we're looking. I just want to make sure the board understands that what I'm looking for is a full-time economic development director that's going to go out there and, and bring in the needed infrastructure jobs that we need here and that is not going to be picking up the slack in the building department or the planning department. They're going to be working with the, these departments to keep people here and yes they may take over the economic development you know responsibilities with the EDC and, uh, and the DDA but that's all part of keeping businesses here and expanding businesses here and, and uh, developing everything that we need here to move forward. We don't need more vacant buildings that the economy has dealt us. So uh, I'm asking that we, that we approve this um, assistant planning director economic development position <coughs> as outlined and include the draft, the two-page draft that's uh, descri job description that uh, uh, Mr. Smith provided us and that that be forwarded to the uh, Civil Service Commission for review. If the Civil Service Commission has a has a different idea, then they should get back to us before it's posted, so that this board is clear on what we're posting for. If they agree, then I guess they can just go ahead and post it. But if there's a change in these job descriptions, because it's their responsibility to review this, 
then um, they should let us know before it's posted. So that's my motion. Is there a second? Second. If I could, I'd like to speak to that. Um, so I, I was a fill-in here on the uh, Personal Vacancy Review Committee. Um, so this is not an area that I've done a lot of in terms of the, I've sat on a lot of the uh, uh, committees that review positions and things like that. But um, so some of the questions that I asked at the meeting got to, I think, the point that you're trying to make, Mr. Pearl, and that is that um, through, through the chair to you, um, and that is that, um, I, you know, this is an assistant planning director, economic development. I would prefer if it was economic development specialist. Right. That's it. Straight. Straight. That's what I want. <laughs> I want somebody with experience who knows how to do business attraction and retention. Um, and I think those two words are missing from this. So there's all the, there was, there's always this sort of like generic uh, planning experience and the you know strategic uh, planning and developing networks and things like that. I want somebody who's going to go out, knock on doors. That's right. And actually beat doors down to say, this is what we want here. This is what our strategic plan that we've already developed has identified, and now go and get it right. and bring it here. Now, that's not a small task. That's a unique thing. Um, but, but I don't like it that this is drawn too generic. And so just, you know, out of that, uh, so... The education experience, a bachelor's degree from an accredited college or university with a major coursework in business or public administration, urban planning, economic development, finance? Uh, I'm not sure why finance is in there. Uh, I don't know that that fits. Um, or a related field, which then is the catch-all. Yeah. So do you want you to can hire anybody? Um, finance could be fine. Stake out finance or related field? I, so, so, all right, so that gets to the overall question. Do we do this now, or does the Civil Service Commission do this? Well, we have to give them a Because I'm still unclear, and I think there's a, uh, some a disparity of opinion among our HR director and the Civil Service Commission. Mm -hmm. Well, look, at the, the, you know, this is covered by Civil Service Act 246 of 1965, and if you read it, there is some question about whether the Civil Service Commission is maintaining classifications or whether they can create a job class description. I and, and what they've done in practice. Right. What? Yeah. But I don't think okay. there's been too many new jobs that have been created in Clinton Township I, in a long time. So I'm willing to work with the Civil Service Commission if it, yeah. if it, uh, you know. Thank you. And I'd like to see it come back to us before it's posted. And if we agree then we go forward. If we don't agree, then we create a uh, department head position, which is not civil service. And that, that would be the alternative. But as long as we agree with what the civil service wants to do with it, then we can go forward with the original plan. Okay. So then let me let you know what I want tightened up on this job description, and that is um, the education and experience is too broad. I want to tighten to specific urban planning, economic development uh, experience. I want um, the words retention and attraction experience included in the five years of work experience in a professional level economic development position with a concentration on retention and attraction experience. I would agree. Can I ask a question? I agree that? with that. And, and I want... Um, uh, I think you already indicated this change, and that is a requirement for the certification, not yes, is desirable. Yes. Okay. Do you want to make the title different too? Then, as you um, stated, or? I would actually like to see that. I would like to see instead. Assistant planning director almost implies management of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bruce, you're like, you've got yourself one assistant planning director, and then you've got... Carol. Don't forget Carol. Carol. And then hey, Carol. I think one more staff person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think you need three directors for two staff people. So I'd like to see this as a specific uh, economic development specialist. We do just, you know, we do have three staff people. Yeah. Okay, three. Myself. Okay, but just, just for clarification. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you want to call it You're economic. a small staff, so am I. So, I, I, I but I get it. I, I, but economic. you don't want too many chiefs. <laughs> uh, 
Mr. Aragona, then. Yeah, I just got a call, uh, question for you, Paul. So, <laughs> um, so I have a degree in biomedical diagnostics. Why I went into government, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> but, We're um, but too. yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Ken. Appreciate that. One. <laughs> um, my, I guess my concern, and I, these are minor changes, so I'm, I'm willing to go along with it. That's fine. But you're tightening up that bachelor's degree quite a bit. And then that second bullet point says five years of work experience and a professional level capacity in an economic related area is required. So as it's written now, if we have a candidate who's great, but they have a degree in communications and they got this five years and they can show us a huge portfolio of all this great economic development they've done. You know what? Good point, Mr. Aragona. And so I'll say I would, I would, I would uh, say the die in the ditch issue is the five years experience, but it's got to include re retention and attraction. So business retention and attraction record. experience. Oh. Okay. So do you want to leave the amendment to the bachelor's degree or do you want to do away with that one? I'm it's up to you. I'm okay with, uh, you know, sort of like leaving it somewhat broad on the education, but the experience is the uh, important point. I'd agree. Okay. I would agree with that. Mr. Thompson. We are a deliberative heard? body, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, you know, a lot of times when you look at job descriptions or when you look at, at things and other related you know, duties or other, that I think really kind of speaks to what Mr. Aragona is saying. I, I've interviewed a lot of people and I've seen a lot of different economic development directors and they've come from all different aspects. Um, experience is key, you're right. But I think leaving the language in there and, or other related um, I'm sorry, I don't have the language in front of me. That that leaves that kind of discretionary, um, uh, you know, option. I, right. I just think options are good when you're looking at filling a position like this because it's not it's not black and white like planning or zoning. Right. Planning and zoning right. is black and white. You know, it's, it meets the ordinance or it doesn't meet the ordinance. Right. Economic development, there's just so many aspects to it. Really, <laughs> personality and experience are the keys. Right? You want a type A personality, you want somebody that you can see so has been, um, is a goal-oriented person and has results. That's the important part. Mrs. West. Thank you. Um, I did hear a few people out in the audience go, uh, when they said the, um, how much the compensation, and I think you're thinking it's 140 to start. That's everything. That's health care package. Everything. That's your health care package, your everything. So. Just so you know, that's that. Good point. Mr. Pearl, I would ask that before you give that to the Civil Service Commission that you have Mr. Thompson take a look at it. Right. Okay. Yeah, and do you want to change the title? Mm -hmm. Yes. To uh, Economic Development Specialist? Yes. Okay. So that's my motion. And, it, and just to clarify then, because there's been some sort of movement on things, but um, we're... We're leaving the language on um, on education the same. Are we taking finance out though? We can leave finance in. I mean, you know, okay. leave it in. If okay. you're leaving it broad, so but um, I would uh, I would say five years of work experience in a professional level economic related area with specific concentrations in business retention and attraction. Okay, I'll get that redone. Send to everybody. Yes, sir. Bob Hogan, 36755 Bar Street, Clinton Township. Is this an assistant director or a director position you're looking for? Mr. Pearl. It'll be within the, as long as it goes, as long as civil service agrees with us, it'll be a, uh, it won't be a department head. If they don't agree with us, then it, it'll be a department head. Position. I don't think I understood. Not, it's a director or a department head? Well, or I don't want to call it director. It's, it's not going to be a director. It's going to be economic development specialist under the planning department. He'd report but, to Mr. Thompson. Correct. Right. At this time. When Mr. Thompson was hired, he had a proven track record. Why wouldn't we ask for a proven track record for this position? We, we are. That's we what are. I'm speaking to. We are. That says That's proven track record? Yes. Yes. That's what I'm yes. I didn't read that. And how much does he get? How much is the pay? Not the gross amount but 80, the specific pay 80, like so a 80, range like fifty dollars fifty to eighty five thousand no. or something it's like eighty one to ninety four or something like that i think it's a hundred to hundred and one that's mm -hmm. no i don't have it in front of me it starts out at eighty in the eighties 80. 
80 minimum eighty. Like ninety four is mm -hmm. what I remember from the meeting that we had with the HR director in the 96. personal vacancy whatever. review. Okay, ninety six. Yeah, and why that range? Pretty soon we're talking real money, right? Why that range? Yeah. Fault. Why that range? Just to clarify. That was the pay level for assistant directors. Right. Does that make sense? Yep, we're all set. Thank you. That could change. Mr. Pearl has a motion on the floor, and we have a support. Mr. Gillingham, yes. you, you amended. The, From uh, the amendments, and they were accepted. Okay. Yes. Okay. They were. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Gillingham? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Keenan? Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion. Yes. Item 11 is a quarterly treasurer's report. Doing so much work on this that I'm not uh, up to speed. Um, where is my quarterly treasurer's report? Is it on your computer? It is, but I do have a hard copy. Bear with me. So uh, just a couple points to make on this. It's routine. It's in the packet. I apologize. Um, I did send it out late, but I did send it out to every member as well as place it into Laserfish. So an update of the Laserfish, you should have a copy of it. Um, the main thing that I put in here, um, this is a routine thing. It's a quarterly treasurer's report. It is for the third quarter of the fiscal year. So that time period is October 1st through December 31st of 2019, which represents the end of the calendar year, but the third quarter of the fiscal year. Um, during that time period, interest rates drop. Uh, in fact, one of the things I put in here is a chart as to what the um, what interest rates have been doing in uh, the 2018-19 fiscal year and what they did in the 19-20 fiscal year. Uh, Fed has chosen to um, uh, make uh, significant cuts in the uh, Fed fund rate, which is the money that is um, uh, the borrowing rate for the banks. And that, of course, then dictates um, what the interest rate will be for loans and um, investment grade returns for uh, the limited investments that we do under Public Act 20 and under our investment policy. Um, the, the couple of points, there's been a real debate. The, those that support the Fed fund uh, rate cuts are arguing that we need this to, um, uh, because there's been slowing growth, there's been trade concerns, there were a few yield curve inversions. Uh, as you know, the yield curve, when it inverts, it's almost one of the surest signs of a recession on the horizon. Um, it is one of our, the leading <coughs> indicators of a recession. The criticism of the cuts is that rates are already so low. And as a result of them being low at, at that like 2.3, 2.4 level, um, the, uh, if we do get into a real recession, the Fed's not going to have as many tools in the toolbox to be able to respond and then help uh, increase the money supply and then help the economy grow during the recession to lengthen its duration, leading to uh, recessions tending to be more severe than, than not. So our strategy has been to eliminate some of the vehicles that we've previously invested in, like commercial paper. Um, we. We, we have limited them to CDs, our, our local government investment pool funds that have been outperforming uh, our CD rates, our short-term CD rates, and to um, uh, continue our investment in our managed bond portfolio, which then is providing better rates for the township and better yield returns. But all, all of this under the... Under the um, the mantra for local government that is emphasized in both the act and our investment policy. We first look at safety, we don't lose principal. Two, we look at our liquidity concerns and make sure the money's there when we need it. And three, then we look at the yield. So um, with that. Are there any questions of Mr. Gillingham? Move to approve. Support. Roll call, roll call please. Mr. Pearl? Yes. <laughs> Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mr. Gillaham? <coughs> yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion Thank you. Item 12 has been deleted. Item 13? Approval Item of 12 has not been deleted. Oh. Item 12 is the, is the class. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Okay. We, we, we eliminated the DIA. So mm -hmm. item 12 is now 
Thank approval you. of Class C and SDM liquor license transfer. Also, I want to make an, um, a clarification. This is also to approve outdoor liquor sales permit as well. Okay. Dear board members, applicant Bobcat Bonnie's LLC, located at 17330 Hall Road, store number 195, Clinton Township, Michigan 48038, has successfully fulfilled the requirements for the building department and fire department, as well as a police <clears throat> background check and payment of the application fees necessary to acquire a liquor license transfer. Based on this fulfillment of requirements, Bobcat Bonnie's LLC requests approval Condition, approval conditional upon certificate of occupancy. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Sincerely, Kim Meltzer. Mr. Cannon, can I further explain? Yes. The reason for this add-on was because the applicant um, was under the assumption that they did not have to get approval by the board because they had a manager's agreement with, um, they're taking over um, Max and Irma's. Um, however, when speaking with our attorney, Mr. Dolan, um, he conveyed to them the necessity for them to comply with our ordinance, and they were um, needing to um, get this more sooner than later. And so it was. We want to be, you know, good business um, hosts for for the businesses here. And I want to further read um, that in the approval, our police um, stated that he was assigned a Class C liquor license for the um, location listed, and Matthew Buscard, who is standing before us today, has no police record in the Michigan Criminal History Tool website. Also listed in the application are Sherry Bowman, who also sits in the audience, and Dennis Fulton, who is another applicant, a partner in this um, endeavor. Both have, or neither have records in, of the Michigan within the Michigan Criminal History Tool website. Um, also, Lieutenant Randall visited the business on January 31st and spoke to Matthew Buscard. Buscard and I, and he did walk through the building and there were no police concern. There are no issues with the liquor license according to the Michigan License and Regulatory Affairs website. Um, so we also have approval from the Planning Department. I have application approval from the Treasurer's Department, Fire, and um, Again, building approves it with the, their uh, being conditional upon the CFO. Thank you. Since everything seems to be in order, tell us about your business. Uh, so we uh, own Bobcat Bonnie's. This is our fifth and probably final location for a while. Uh, we opened five in about five years. We're a very popular concept um, with locations uh, starting out in Corktown, uh, so Old Tiger Stadium, and then in Wyandotte, Ferndale, um, and then Ypsilanti most recently, and now up here at uh, the mall at Partridge Creek. Took over the Max and Irma's because at the time um, I was very ambitious and I knew Max and Irma's was very not ambitious <laughs> about their continued growth. Uh, so I sent them a message basically letting them know if they closed any more in the Metro Detroit area, specifically hinting at Partridge Creek to let me know. And I got a call that night. Um, hmm. So uh, they were looking to exit. We were looking to entrance. Um, I used to run the Bar Louis there for a little while and worked as the district manager uh, for Bar Louis. Um, so I knew the mall in the area. And it's a lovely area. And we're very excited to be here. Also. Uh, the clerk's office helped us a lot. Um, this is the first time we've gone through a township um, uh, application. Um, and so her assistance and her staff's assistance has been vital to us getting this done. I couldn't have done it without them. I mean, I've never met people who don't really know us who are like, yeah, we'll help you out. So it's been, uh, it's been really appreciated. So thank you. Thank you so much, clerk. Thank you. Good. When do you plan to start serving the public? Um, as soon as possible. Um, so we have an application also with the MLCC. Part of that is expedited because I already uh, have interests in other liquor licenses with my other locations as well. So fingerprinting, uh, police background check, financial checks, all that stuff have already been done with the other prior applications. And so with that, to just further explain, that's yes. a conditional license that you'll receive, which would help you to be able to operate more sooner than having to wait. Yeah, so the uh, the MLCC is trying to get away from these management agreements because they're very tricky, and the language is very loose and kind of fast. Um, and so they, a while ago, approved uh, conditional licenses where they'll do an application right away. And, and before they do hard checks on everything, they can look at an overall picture and say, OK, this seems like a business that would be appropriate for here. They jump through hoops A, B, C, and D, and stuff like that. So we do have an application for a conditional license that is being expedited because we do already have other licenses. Very um, good. Yes. Then, My business partner, Dennis Fulton, is actually a citizen, uh, lives in the township. Uh, he also owns Mercury Burger Bar as well as Ottawa Via in downtown Corktown. Um, and he's a retired uh, assistant uh, chief for DPD. 
Very good. Detroit. Detroit, 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 Detroit Police, Police Department. Sorry. Police Department. Yeah. yeah. Ex, okay. Ex officer. But can he, you know the, the, Mr. Cannon, can he you ask him to tell us what his store is going to offer? Oh, yeah. So our store, uh, our uh, concept and idea came out of the overbloom of all these overly expensive restaurants. I used to run one of them called Gold Cash Gold. They recently closed. Um, but at the time, Gold Cash Gold and all these high-end restaurants were opening up, and nobody was targeting this new up-and-coming segment of Detroit that maybe couldn't afford, you know, $50, $60 per person and could more so afford 20 to 25 We use the same purveyors. My meat come from the same people that Gold Cash Gold, Chartreuse, Trues, all of them come from. Same thing with our produce and our local uh, uh, vegetables when it's in season. Uh, we just don't charge you an arm and a leg for it. So our concept is kind of fun. We were also voted uh, one of the 24 best brunches in America. We were the really? only one from Michigan selected that. Um, and we do a ton in our community. At the beginning of the meeting, you talked about the barrier-free um, slash universal um, uh, children's park. That would be something we would very much so dive head into to support, Good. whether that's fundraising, volunteers, uh, shaking the trees of our connections and stuff like that. That is huge for us. Um, specifically, child charities are something we look for. At two of our locations, we work with students with disabilities to learn job training skills. Uh, that's something we're continuing up here. We, uh, Sherry actually created a program with uh, some uh, learning disabled students up here that will learn job skills such as like, you know, uh, dishwashing, table busing, rolling silverware and stuff like that. We're super proud of our wind up program. We actually got to hire 100% of the students who worked with us in the pro, uh, Mixter School program. These are for students uh, with uh, severe autism. So we're very excited about that stuff. We're definitely community oriented and community focused. Good, That's well, sure. welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So, yeah. do you go by Matt? I go by Matt, yeah. Okay, all right. You Sorry, I'm like, unusually nervous. I don't know why. <laughs> you seem like, <laughs> like a Matt. You seem like a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, Was this a trucking like, company thing? Don't like that. let that scare you. Dude. Yeah, I'm like, so, <laughs> so I think I'm going to do towing. No, <laughs> so, so Bobcat Bonnie's, I mean, it just sounds fun. Yeah, okay, all right? yeah. So, but, you know, the only, um, you know, thing I'd like to have you speak to yeah. um, that you haven't already, because you present extremely well, uh, but... Um, the the very fast expansion. Yeah. And sometimes when you grow too fast, um, things aren't as well capitalized as they need to be, and sure. one major hic hiccup can put a uh, real problem. And so, right. you know, it sounds like you've got your stuff in order. Tell us how you've got in order on that. To so part of it is is a lot of people over leverage themselves. Um, so you look at. Um, I think a great example of that would be like in the early to late uh, 90s, Damon's, where they expanded so much so fast and they built these big palatial restaurants that were $4 million. And, and as trends come and go, they can't keep up with that. Our concept is, is we generally find a restaurant that's at the end of its life cycle. So whether it needs to be reconcepted, uh, a couple got into it uh, and thought that this was going to be a great idea, you know, to open a restaurant and stuff like that. We generally find something that at, it's at its end that A, we can come in and, and make a Bobcat Bonnie's very quickly and B, lets them exit with some cash in their pocket and stuff like that and also gives us truthfully a deal you know generally landlords are behind on rent getting excuses why their rent's not being paid so we come in and, and we kind of uh uh assail that concern um our big point of difference is, is that we don't carry a lot of debt so for example if everything would could put like right now today we're probably out between the five locations probably about four hundred thousand dollars which isn't 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 wild or crazy you look at the liquor licenses and the cost of those you know so that'll chip away a little bit at it um, uh, tables, chairs, all that stuff. We have a lot of value still in what we do, generally because we come in so cheap, to be very candid with you, um, and because we don't you know, take on projects where we need to invest huge structural uh, changes, um, we can come in for pretty cheap and not carry a very large debt load, which ends up getting paid at the excitement of opening a new restaurant. Right. And so, then, um, um, oh, and um, and we also carry partners in each one. So Dennis is my partner at this one. I have a partner at the Ypsilanti store. Uh, it's generally somebody local to the neighborhood, so that there's that local connection as well. Mm -hmm. Smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then just um, the uh, process with the mall, because I'm sure <laughs> they have done a lot of checks. Oh yeah. If you oh, can, yeah. you know, just speak to that. I'm sure they've. 
You know, um, the mall and the mall system is is going to need a hard overhaul. I think we all know that. Um, mm -hmm. um, and, and they're going to have to find a way to change how they used to do it back in the 90s to how they need to do business nowadays to collect and, and keep dynamic spots where people are excited. I think um, if this wasn't going to be one that I really wanted to do, I might have walked away. Uh, just because the the mall, <laughs> Michigas, and all the, the anchors, stuff you got to do, it's the just anchors are, it, it, know, it, it's there. tough. It's tough, and they want you to jump through all these hoops. But at the same time, like you're saying, the anchors aren't even there. So you want me to do X, Y, and Z? It's like, well, maybe you should do something with these two spots first. You know, um, they have been accommodating to a degree. They get that we're a little bit different than their normal ones, um, and they've been very surprised and um, excited about the amount of. Um, uh, excitement we bring, to say the least. As I said, Matt, you present extremely well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pearl. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it sounds great. Yeah. I mean, the one thing that's going well at Carter is just restaurants. Oh yeah. And they keep adding. And I'm excited that yours is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I'll be excited to try that. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate the work you're putting into it, and how excited you are, and your other locations are doing well. So I think with all the scrutiny that you've gone through with everybody, I, I'll move that we approve the uh, transfer ownership of the Class C. Support. Support. And the, li as, and the SDM license approval for outdoor liquor sales permit. Thank Support you, Mr. Mr. Gillingham. Is that enough? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Uh, Mr. Keyes? Yeah, just very quickly. Yeah. So you talked about being dynamic and attracting talent. I'm curious on staffing, what you're going to be looking for. I know that it's very competitive right now, whether we're yeah. talking cooking staff or even just front of house staff. How are you um, going to work to stay competitive? Are you going to look local, bring in people from other stores? What's your thought? We go local all the time. So one of our big things, and, and this is going to sound, you, you'll get it when I explain it. Um, locally in Detroit, in Cork Town specific, um, a lot of the restaurants generally don't look local because uh, they feel like there is a curve um, from where you know the population base is to the skill set of what you need. Um, so at Gold Cash Gold, we really you know kind of brought in all the kids from the suburbs. You know what I mean? Right. I wanted it to be something different. So one of the big things we do, say you had no experience and, and you were one of our neighbors, you would come in and you would start out working prep, and then from prep you would learn how to do some of the skills on the uh, on the line. And each time your income becomes more. Mm -hmm. um, we pride ourselves on having a very diverse staffing base, and part of that is in intentional. Um, you're not going to get at Bobcat Bonnie's the diversity that you want just from Joe Schmo coming and applying. You have to be intentional on how you hunt for people who are local and in the neighborhood and, and, and on how you train and interact with them. Um, that's hugely important for us. Um, I love the fact that our restaurants represent the communities. You will come into Corktown and, and, and you will see a representation of genuine Detroit, whether it's young and old, um, you know, Muslim, African American. It, it's a blend of everyone. And, and it's awesome. And we work really hard to cultivate that. Um, we put a lot of effort into that. Awesome. Well, no, yeah. it's, uh, Mr. Gilham said you're a great uh, presenter, and I'm excited yeah. about it, especially the brunch. Uh, there's oh, not yeah. a lot of brunches in Clinton Township, no. so this will be a good opportunity. We're going to take our time with brunch. We'll yeah. give me a couple <laughs> weeks. No, I'm holding on It's that a one. little overwhelming. It's a little overwhelming. Don't you guys do Bloody Marys? Isn't that your specialty? Yeah, we do a Build Your Own Bloody Mary bar. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for a couple bucks, we give you the glass, we give you the vodka, and then you, whoops, you mix it any way you want. Yeah. We have eight different kinds of pickles, every hot sauce you could ever imagine, from light to burn your mouth on fire. <laughs> um, it's, it's a really fun concept, and we team that up with 80s and 90s music, so the energy during brunch is really high and fun. People really tend to enjoy it. Um, we really focus on, on having a good atmosphere and, and being a little bit for everybody. We do vegan and vegetarian. Mm -hmm. uh, we do gluten-free, and then everything's pretty much made in-house, so we can tweak things to accommodate needs of people. Yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. Mr. Mr. Cannon. Okay. We Mr. have a motion and a support. Roll Mr. Cannon. Mr. Pearl. Pearl. May I? Thank you. Yeah. I just want to say yeah. I've been looking at your reviews. I yeah. think they're all, you know, fives, and I like the 
holy cow, what an awesome experience. Thank so you. I'm excited. Thank I'm you, excited. thank you. I'm glad you were looking at those yeah. reviews. Sometimes I see, <laughs> I sometimes see the other ones where it's like, no, what going, is going on with this going Bloody right, Mary bar? No. no, actually, I mean, no, they were, they're yeah. very, very good. So I, I, I'm looking forward we, to We work that. really hard, and that's why I kind of made the joke at the beginning that this is my fifth and final one. Uh, it, it takes a lot, you know. Um, it, prior to any board approval and stuff like that, um, I had actually called uh, the clerk's office because uh, I was a little distressed because we had taken on all the staff of Max and Irma's and all their salaries, um, at, thinking that this would be you know a quick, easy transition. Our partners that we purchased the building from weren't forthright with a lot of different things, so we've had to jump through hoops. Mm. So there's been a little bit of a financial strain mm. on that, so I am thankful that it sounds like this might get approved because this means that we can keep people working working and get it open soon. And I appreciate that a lot. That's very important to us. I am going to miss the cookies from Max. They'll come back. Okay, okay good. <laughs> yeah, we're taking cookies and tortilla soup on a break for a second so people don't get confused because it's a quick transition. Right. And then we'll bring stuff like that back. <laughs> okay, ready? Uh, roll call. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mr. Gillahan. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Keyes. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer, yes. Motion passes. Thank you Thank so you much. And if there's charities, robotics, um, anything you guys got, we, we actively participate. Please, please do not hesitate to get my number from Kim. Anything you need. We, we love to support the neighborhood. We really, really do. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Item 13. Awesome Budget amendment for repair and maintenance of the police station. Dear Township Board members, on Tuesday, January 7th, 2020, the Budget Ways and Means Committee met with Chief Fred Posovitz to discuss maintenance and repairs that have been done at the police headquarters. The costs of the repairs have been listed in detail below for your review. The committee unanimously voted to approve the budget to be amended for the repairs, as well as directed to have the boiler issues presented to the Township Building Committee for further review into the problem. Amend capital outlay budget, parking lot, LED canopy lights at a cost of $26,700. Building camera system at a cost of $32,150 and new high efficiency boiler at $91,200 for a total cost um, to the amended capital outlay is $150,050. Also amend repair and maintenance budget uh, amendment is boiler for the boiler repairs at a cost of $10,000. On Wednesday, January 8, 2020, the Township Building Committee met and discussed the current boiler at the Township Police Station. The committee unanimously voted in favor of a total replacement to a high-efficiency boiler system. Chief Posovitz and Mrs. Bednar will be available at the meeting okay. if you have any additional questions. Thank you for your consideration in this matter. Sincerely, Kim Meltzer, Chairperson for the Budget Ways and Means Committee. And just again to briefly explain what we did at the last board meeting. This was on the agenda. There was there were two letters. One was read in from our, our um, chief, and then this was just partially read, but the motion wasn't careful enough to include the amendment to the capital outlay budget. So that's what we're making sure we're doing. So we are approving this request to amend the capital outlay budgets in those amounts. So moved. Support. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Keyes. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mr. Gillaham. Yes. Mrs. Meltzer. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And item 14 is request a closed session to discuss pending litigation. And we, on this item, we will not be coming out of closed session. Yeah, it's uh, correct. For, for the record, it's um, Clinton first slash Viviano versus uh, Clinton Township at all. Mr. Cannon, I may actually be asking that we come out of closed session based on the conversation. I have a couple of questions for both you, Ms. Meltzer, and the attorney. <laughs> Mr. Dolan? You think can't be asked in the, you don't want them asked in closed session? No, I, I, I want the questions asked in closed session based on the answer I might be asking that we come out of closed session afterwards to vote on something. What's that? But that's not relevant to this issue, is it? it yes, it is. We would have okay. to keep the meeting open then. Yes, sir. We can't, right. we can't close the meeting and then reopen mm -hmm. it. Yeah, we do it all the time. We have a closed session and then no. we open it back yeah. up. No, yeah. we go into closed session, but we don't close the meeting. Once we vote to close the meeting, the meeting is closed. Okay, so, so then I, I'd be no. saying we wouldn't close the meeting. I'm sorry right. if I right. misspoke. Yeah. Okay. So we would have to come out of closed session whether we have questions or not. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. That's fine. I appreciate it. Is there a motion to do that? So moved. Support. Roll call, please. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. 
Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mr. Gillaham? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Then we have item 15, request to go into closed session, Clinton versus Bruglio, 41B District Court. We don't need to do the other, Mr. Dolan, because we will be coming out of closed session. Right. So we can do that in yep. closed session okay. since there is pending litigation. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mr. Gellaham? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Approval of the minutes of the January 21st, 2020 regular township board meeting. So moved unless there are any changes. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Gillaham? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. The approval of the bills? So moved. Is there a second? Support. Support. Supported by Mr. Aragona. Roll call, please. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Gillaham? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. We have one public comment this evening. Mr. Sam Bushell. Sam Bushell, uh, 18546 Wayland Drive. Um, I read with interest in the paper that uh, with the three new properties going in on Grosbeck, that such as the Duncan, it's completely being redone on the outside. According to the paper, the building official and the planner said they're doing no big deal. Some, you know, a few things on the inside and a little bit on the outside. Well, in all actuality, if anybody's driven by there, you realize it's been six weeks of major construction, total redo, add on to the front of a, a foyer, total second floor type uh, facade put on that was never there. If this doesn't require a site plan, I can't imagine what would. Then the other problem was that uh, Major Magic, as I brought up before, it's changing from a restaurant to an entertainment venue that sells some pizza. Uh, that is, to, uh, to, that should obviously go to a site plan also, and I've seen some uh, block work going on there where they're blocking up some of the walls on the outside. And I think that, you know, there again, I think the newspapers have even, even gotten to where I like the fact that they look at the videos and they can see this. Th they know, they can go by, they can look at file footage and go look at what the Dunkin' Donuts looked like before. And they can go look at the amount of work going on there now. And they have to say, gee, they know our ordinances, they know what a site plan would cost. And they can look, Sterling Heights is about the same population as us. Their planning commission is approving site plan after site plan after site plan. They have many meetings. Our planning commission, because a lot of this is going on like this with no standards being kept up, we have planning commission meetings canceled because there's no projects. And then there's some projects, but it'll be one at a time. Uh, I think that's because something's going wrong and our ordinances are not being enforced. Because if anybody looks at the Duncan property and they say that that is just a minor little facelift, well, I, I'd love to have their budget for what they do around their house. I think the board has to look at this and say, if every board member drives by the old Duncan property and they look at what's going on and you say that that is minor and you have to ask yourself, why is it all of a sudden that the newspaper is actually asking, don't they need to go to site plan? I think a lot of the voters by November are going to be asking, why are we not getting the minimums in the South End? Thank you. Thank you. I, I would tell you our ordinances are being enforced. The footprint of the buildings that you mentioned has not changed. You have been informed several times by our planning and our building department of that fact. With that, we will go into closed session. Well, the, foot, the footprint you can go look at it, they're building on the front. <clears throat> Call this meeting of the Township Board back to order. We are returning to item 15, the Clinton versus Bruglio pending 41B District Court. Mr. Dolan. Thank you, Mr. Cannon. At this time, it would be my recommendation that the board on item 15, which is a matter pending as an uh, ordinance prosecution in the 41B District Court, approve the execution of the agreement for installment payments as presented with the further modification that would include as an additional cumulative remedy the application of 20209 of our ordinances, which is disapproval for non-payment. 
The agreement, which is in recordable form as outlined, will require uh, the defendant and Mr. Bruglio to execute the agreement to, uh, which should be in recordable form, to also uh, furnish to us uh, at the time of execution the first payment that's provided in the agreement, which is in the amount of uh, $2,954.40 and to also uh, forthwith obtain both site approval and also the combination of the parcels and that in order for the agreement to be considered uh, fully effective uh, that those two uh, tasks would have to be completed uh, so that in total would be the uh, motion that I'm asking you to present and to approve. So moved. Support. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Keyes. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Gillaham. Yes. Mrs. Meltzer. Yes. Motion passed. A motion to adjourn this meeting is in order. So moved. Support. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Keyes. Yes. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mr. Cannon. <coughs> yes. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mr. Gillaham. Yes. Mrs. Meltzer. Yes. Motion Thank you. Meeting passed. adjourned.